it's vitally important that we understand how to use a prototyping board. So the first concern are the power rails. Now we've got four sets of blue and red lines. So adjacent to the red line is a strip of pins. And all of these pins are connected together by a copper behind them. Uh, just the same way really adjacent to the blue line is another strip of pins which are also connected together. I should add that this strip, the blue strip, is not connected to the red strip. Now there's, there are four groups of these and they are all independent. Okay, So for example this strip of blue here and this strip of blue here okay, are not connected, they're independent and that lets us have separate power supplies, up to four different power supplies in fact. We're only going to be using one. So let's get the first power supply set up because we can't do anything till we have power. So on the nuclear board, if you look on the inside of this connector here, you'll see some labels and one of them is GND which stands for ground. So for the top lock there, it's the third up from the bottom is ground and we're going to connect that to this strip here which is adjacent to the blue line okay so that's the convention for zero volts now using a red wire again sticking to convention i'm going to go for the 3v3 pin which is that one there that's four from the top 3v3 by convention means 3.3 volts and that's going to connect to all the pins adjacent to the red strip so this is now zero volts and this strip here is 3.3. Now if I plug in my nuclear board we can confirm that. I plug in the USB port. I'm going to pop a couple wires in to show you what I mean. One in there, one in there. If it'll go in, it's a bit tight. And with my voltmeter, my digital voltmeter, connected to the V settings, it must be V, and whatever you do, do not put it in the current setting, you'll short circuit the power supply. I'm going to have a look at the voltage difference between those two, and I see 3.31 volts. So that's my 3.3 volt supply. Okay, so that's the power supply. Now let's make something happen. So I'm going to disconnect my power before I make a change, and I'm going to take an LED. Now remember, the LED um, has two wires, one of which is longer than the other. The longer one is the anode. Current flows into the anode and out through the cathode, or into the long, out through the short. So I'm going to put it into the prototyping board like this. So I'm in rows 27 and 28. I've got my anode in row 28. So I want to connect that to uh, 3.3 volts and the cathode wants to go to ground via the current limiting resistor. That's important. So let's do that bit first. Let's put the resistor in there like that. So what have I done? I've connected the cathode along all these, all these pins on this strip are connected, yeah? to one end of the resistor and the other end of the resistor has gone to the zero volt rail. Okay, and then finally, I want to connect the anode to the power as shown in the schematic. So we do that with a, another wire. So that goes into the power rail and that can go into a pin on row 28, which is connected to the long lead of the LED. Okay, apply power by plugging in the USB and indeed the LED lights up. Now if we get the LED the wrong way around, now I'm going to be naughty and do this while it's wired, you'll see that nothing comes on. So it is important which way around that goes. It is a diode. Current only flows in one direction through a diode. It just happens to be a diode that emits light, hence its name. Okay, in the next task we're going to make the light flash on and off using software running on the microcontroller here on the nuclear board.